Hello, in this video we're going to cover setting up SFML on a Mac using Xcode. If you want to check it out for Visual Studio on Windows, feel free, we've got a video covering that as well. So first of all, there are a couple of things that you need to, well, install before you can create a project. A few things actually. First, make sure you've got Xcode downloaded. It's a free download of the Mac App Store. Once you've done that, fantastic. Then we're going to download Homebrew and Homebrew is this amazing package manager for Mac that allows you to easily install frameworks with ease. So if you just copy this command, open up terminal, I actually prefer the Homebrew one because it just looks green. This is nothing to do with this Homebrew by the way, this is just a theme within terminal. Paste it into here. I've already got it installed, so it'll probably take a little longer on your system. But if you just click enter when you get to this point, type in your password. If it looks like it's not typing anything, that's fine. That's just a security feature. It is. Just type it in, click enter. Now you're just going to download and install Homebrew. For me, it really shouldn't do anything because I've already installed it. Next, we can actually install SFML onto our system using Homebrew. To do that, you type in brew, install, SFML, click enter. This will probably take a little longer for you because I've already got it installed. If he asks for your password, that's fine, just enter it. Once you've done that, we're ready to create our Xcode application. So open up Xcode, click create a new Xcode project then go to command line tool within mac os click next i'm going to just name it sfml tutorial and you can select a team if you want to if you already have an account added that's fine just put anything you want in the organization name and identifier for the language make sure you select c plus plus click click next Save this wherever you want. I'm going to put it on my desktop. Click create. Now, what we want to do before we can start coding is just link SFML with our project. Because at the moment, it's not linked, so we can't use the SFML libraries and files. First of all, go to build settings. Make sure all is selected and combined. Just search for search. Go to search paths header search paths double click it click plus you want to do forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash include so this is the path to where our sfml has been installed using homebrew so this is where all of the header files will reside that will be included shortly now you want to go to build phases go to link binary with libraries click plus now you want to do command shift i mean first of all you want to click add over then you want to do command shift g type in usr i mean forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash seller click go then go to sfml the version that you've installed go to lib and from here you just want to select graphics system and window if you on a at a late date start implementing networking and audio that's fine just add those libraries as well now click open now we are actually all set up and ready to start coding so in our main.cpp what you want to do is just get rid of all the code that's already there you want to do hash include sfml forward slash graphics dot hpp you want to do hash include io stream now you want to do a couple of defines for the screen width which i'm going to set to 10 24 now another define for screen underscore height set that to 10 24 now do a int main, which will be the entry point into our application. First, we need to create a render window. So SF render window, 
SF is just the SF amount namespace. You could put here using namespace SF. I just prefer it like this. I'm going to call it window. We're going to construct it with a SF video mode. And the video mode just takes two parameters, screen width. I think you guessed it, the screen height. You might be thinking, why can't we just put numbers here directly instead of using something like this or even variables? That's fine. I would recommend having variables or hash defines. That way, you can easily change them without having to go into your code because you don't know where this will be. Also, you might be using the screen width and height in loads of different places in the application, which is more than logical. And therefore, you would need to change it every single place that you use it. Instead, you would just change it here and the changes would propagate down, which would be fantastic. The next parameter is the name of our application. So I'm going to call it Awesome Game. And now I'm going to do a while loop. And this is going to be run while the window is open. So this is going to be all of our core game content, whether it's drawing, checking for events, updating the game logic, all of that good stuff. First, you want to do is check for any events. So just create a SF event object, and you're going to do while window dot poll. So you're going to poll event using the event object. So while events are occurring, run this code. And what we're going to do is simply switch on event dot type. Now we can check for different cases. So the only case we're interested in this video is SF event closed. So this will occur when the application is closed by the user. And now we're going to do window dot close dot clear close and do break like so and we're getting a little warning on here so if we hover over click on it it's just saying we haven't handled all the other different events that can occur for now that's fine we're just interested in one basic event and that is allowing the user to quit their application without having to force close it outside of the wall loop that handles the poll event but still within the window dot is open wall loop what we want to do is, let me add a few empty lines, is window dot clear. So this is going to clear the screen every single frame. Then we would actually put all the objects that we're going to draw. So once we've cleared it, we would draw the objects. Then we would do window dot display. So now we would actually be displaying what we've drawn. The reason you do this because you would first handle any sort of you know input, then you would handle any sort of game logic, and the game logic may affect what you're drawing, therefore you clear it. For example, if I click up and I move the character up one space, you don't want to draw it in the current space, you want to draw it in the new space. So you clear the screen, draw the objects again, and then display it to the user. Then outside of all of the while loops, just do return, exit underscore success semicolon and now we have a simple sfml application if we run this bill succeeded fantastic it's opened it up that's great if i click x it closes it so that's it for setting up xcode on a mac to use sfml in your application we will be covering creating a game engine in the next few videos and then we'll be actually getting onto game logic if you have any questions feel free to post them on my education platform sonarlearning.co.uk there'll be a link available to that along with all the links that you need such as homebrew and anything else and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day